summer 1944. The hedgerows of Normandy were alive with tension, where every step through the winding lanes might mean the crack of a rifle shot from a hidden enemy. German snipers had built their reputation on precision. Trained to strike fear into advancing infantry, they understood that a single well-placed bullet could halt an entire squad. They aimed for the head, the cleanest, most certain target. And in the early years of the war, those shots meant death, as fragile steel or leather headgear shattered under the force. But by the time the Americans poured into Europe, something had changed. Reports from the front puzzled German marksmen. They swore their bullets found the mark. They saw helmets snap back, soldiers stagger, yet instead of crumpling lifeless, the targets often ducked for cover and returned fire. What should have been clean kills became near misses. Whispered rumors spread among sniper schools and rifle platoons had the Americans discovered a way to cheat death. The truth lay not in superstition, but in design. The American M1 helmet, mass-produced by the millions, carried a subtle but revolutionary advantage. To German intelligence, it looked like any other dome of steel, but appearances deceived. Its carefully balanced manganese steel alloy, its angled silhouette, and the unique suspension webbing inside created margins of survival that older helmets could not offer. Where a Mauser round might pierce or ricochet off a European design, the M1 absorbed energy, redirected fragments, and turned fatal headshots into survivable glancing blows. For the sniper peering through his scope, it was maddening. For the young infantryman who lived to see another sunrise, it was life-saving. And for the war itself, it was one of those quiet, invisible shifts that changed outcomes. To understand why these helmets unnerved German sharpshooters, we need to step back to the origins of the M1. In 1941, as America braced itself for war, Army engineers were already skeptical of the outdated World War I era doughboy helmets. Those flat brimmed designs left the sides and back of the head exposed, offering little real protection against plunging shrapnel or high velocity rounds. American planners demanded something different, a helmet that could cradle the skull, shield the neck, and disperse energy across a broader surface. The result was the M1, a rounded bowl with sloping sides that seemed almost ordinary, yet carried the subtle geometry of survival. By the time of D-Day, over two million American soldiers marched with these helmets strapped under their chins. They were heavy, yes, and they pinched when worn for long hours, but they offered a psychological comfort the enemy never anticipated. A soldier crouched behind a hedgerow, hearing the crack of a rifle overhead, knew his odds of surviving were better than those of his father's generation. That confidence mattered. Wars are not only fought with weapons but with morale, and the M1 gave soldiers the sense that they were shielded, even when the battlefield suggested otherwise. For the Germans, accustomed to devastating results from their Carabiner 98K rifles, the sight of an American stumbling after a headshot and then recovering broke expectations. Every sniper relied on certainty. The scope was their judge and jury, and a pull of the trigger was supposed to end the story. Yet now the story sometimes continued. Confusion grew in field reports. Was it poor ammunition? Was the angle wrong, or had the Americans developed steel beyond anything the Reich possessed? The answers would reveal themselves slowly, one near miss at a time. The secret of the M1's resilience lay not just in the steel itself, but in how it worked with physics. German bullets, especially from the 7.92 Mauser cartridge, traveled with tremendous speed and penetrative force. Against a flat surface, that energy concentrated on a single point, punching through like a hammer striking glass. But the M1 helmet was rarely flat to the shooter's eye. Its curved design, with subtle slopes along the crown and sides, encouraged bullets to skid away at shallow angles rather than drive straight through. What looked like a simple dome was, in practice, a deflector of death. Inside, a web of cotton straps suspended the helmet shell just above the scalp. This gap created an air cushion that absorbed shock, allowing energy to dissipate before it reached bone. When a round struck, the shell might dent or even crack, but the man beneath often lived, bruised, dazed, perhaps knocked to the ground, but alive. That difference meant everything in combat where survival could hinge on a single second. German snipers, peering through their scopes, saw none of this science. 
they saw only the unbearable contradiction, the sight of a target struck cleanly in the head yet refusing to fall. To them it seemed like luck or fate or perhaps a trick of adrenaline, but with each failed kill confidence eroded. A weapon meant to deliver certainty now carried doubt, and doubt is poison to a sniper. For the Americans, meanwhile, every story of a comrade saved by his helmet spread like wildfire through the ranks. Soldiers tapped their helmets with a kind of reverence, calling them steel pots, joking that they were good for everything from cooking stew to stopping bullets. Behind the humor was truth. These pots saved lives. Accounts from the front reveal just how disorienting this became for German marksmen. In the Bocage country, hidden riflemen wrote in their diaries of soldiers who should have fallen instantly but instead scrambled to cover, sometimes firing back with fury. One sniper from the 352nd Infantry Division described hitting an American sergeant squarely in the forehead at 200 meters, watching him collapse, only to see the man crawl away minutes later. Such moments gnawed at their confidence, chipping away at the myth of absolute accuracy. The enemy seemed protected by more than skill or chance, something material was working in their favor. The psychological toll on snipers cannot be understated. Their craft depended on invisible dominance, the unseen hand that reached across the battlefield to pluck life away. Every failed shot cracked that illusion. A rifle that no longer guaranteed results became a burden. Soldiers spoke of pulling the trigger with hesitation, their faith in training diluted by doubt. And in war, hesitation is deadly. Meanwhile, American units learned to lean on their helmets not just as gear but as talismans. Letters home told mothers and wives that a son had survived a bullet thanks to the pot on his head. Commanders noted morale holding firm even under relentless fire because men believed the army had given them a real chance to walk away alive. The Germans had their formidable Mausers, but the Americans carried faith forged from steel. It was not invincibility. Many helmets split under direct hits, and countless lives were still lost to sharpshooters' precision. Yet compared to the fragile designs of the past, the M1 tilted probabilities just enough. And in warfare, probability can decide the fate of divisions. By autumn of 1944, the mystery of the American helmet had spread beyond individual encounters. German field intelligence tried to explain the phenomenon. Reports circulated that perhaps the Americans had introduced hardened steel unknown to Europe, or that their helmets were double-layered. Some even speculated about experimental alloys brought from secret factories across the Atlantic. Yet when captured helmets were examined, nothing appeared unusual. They looked crude compared to the finely crafted German Stahlhelm, heavier and less elegant. The irony was that simplicity itself gave the Americans their edge. The M1 was designed not for perfection, but for practicality. It could be stamped in massive numbers, its liners swapped easily, its shell replaced without costly craftsmanship. It was built for an industrial war, a conflict where millions of men needed protection quickly. The very abundance of these helmets meant nearly every soldier, from rifleman to medic, benefited from the same quiet safeguard. To the Germans, this democratization of protection was shocking. Their own supply chains often prioritized elite units, leaving ordinary infantry less equipped. In contrast, American logistics ensured that even replacements fresh from the States stepped off ships with helmets capable of blunting a sniper's best shot. For the men under fire, this equality mattered. A private who knew his gear matched that of the sergeant beside him fought with confidence. That confidence translated into resilience on the battlefield, where morale and survival reinforced each other. German sharpshooters, however, found themselves robbed of their psychological advantage. What had once been a feared weapon of terror was now a gamble. Sometimes the shot struck true, other times it sparked only frustration, and that subtle shift in expectation weakened the aura of German marksmanship just when the Reich needed certainty most. As the war dragged into its final year, the helmet's reputation only grew. In the Ardennes, during the bitter winter of 1944, countless GIs owed their survival to the curved steel that caught fragments or turned bullets aside. Soldiers recounted stories around campfires of comrades saved by miraculous deflections, and these tales became part of the folklore of the front. Even skeptics, men hardened by too many battles, admitted the helmet had given them chances they should not have had. 
German prisoners, questioned after firefights, sometimes spoke with disbelief about the resilience they witnessed. They had trusted their rifles to deliver clean, decisive results. Instead, they found opponents who rose again, shaken but defiant. For an army already stretched thin and retreating on multiple fronts, the erosion of sniper dominance was one more sign of a shifting tide. The helmet had not won the war alone, but it had chipped away at the fear German sharpshooters once inspired. When peace finally came, the M1 remained a symbol of survival. Veterans kept them in closets, hung them in garages, or passed them down to sons, each dent and scar a reminder of a day they lived through. Historians later calculated the odds, estimating how many lives had been spared by design rather than chance. Yet numbers alone cannot capture the true legacy. For the men who walked away from bullets meant to end their lives, the helmet was more than steel. It was the thin line between memory and oblivion. German snipers never fully grasped why their certainty failed them. But the American infantrymen knew. Sometimes victory does not shout. Sometimes it arrives quietly, carried on the curve of a helmet, turning death into survival and despair into hope. 